yesterday what we have spoke and yesterday we spoke something about the grace of god <clears throat> which is very important and very vital to understand it many times we understand the grace of god in respect to our salvation only but grace of god is not limited to the salvation area only but grace of god is something which we needs to have continuously without ceasing in our life which can mobilize which can motivates which can pumps our christian journey towards that uh, that that purpose that intention for which god have called each and every one of us so it's a very beautiful thing when you understand the grace of god which we needs it's it has to move on it has to uh, it has to be empowered or it has to be uh, for us uh, more and more um, needed every day of our life someone can take me out from the host uh, please so that i will not be disturbed and people comes in between thank you so much so that is something which is very important for uh, the believers to be understanding something so we are going to uh, see something which is just uh, another part which is very important and that is faith faith is also vital and very important uh, when the grace was supplied by god or by grace when you are saved so yesterday just in a past clips we i can just uh, conclude that grace which bring salvation into your life you cannot limit with the salvation only grace helps you to strengthen you grace of god which brings uh, the strength to fight against your temptation it will helps you to be um, it helps you to be more sober it will helps you to have a hope the grace of god helps you to have a hope of eternity so that's what yesterday we have just dealt with today we are going to uh, go to the next part of that and that is through faith that's what we read in ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 when we read can anyone read ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 7 and 8 and yeah. raised and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in christ jesus that in can the ages to five? come yeah can, we can read from the five onwards yeah even when we were dead in trespasses made us mm. alive together with with christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in christ mm. jesus that mm. in the ages to come he might show the exceeding exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god it is the gift of god so yesterday we have just dealt with the grace uh, that uh, that is really very vital and most important in our christian journey but here in the eighth verse it says that for by the grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves and it is the gift of god bible very clearly uh, speaks about it so it's through the faith which is also very important which by which you are <clears throat> saved but uh, always remember the grace is from the part of god and the faith is from the part of man that is the faith we apply and grace which god gives hallelujah so that is something which was written that for by grace are you saved through faith so faith faith is also something which is a very prominent which i just wants to uh, we are going to see how the lord wants to speak to each and every one of us so we are saved through grace grace as well i said it's an unmerited favor from the god <laughs> there where we did not deserve it but god gave it to us where we are we are about we our our deservance was punishment and the punishment was uh, the hell fire 
so god had did not have only mer only mercy on us but it also have a grace on us that means undeserving a uh, deserving punishment he divert or withhold and he also makes you the children of god <clears throat> that is the grace which god have shown to each and every one of us so but always remember something that when god have already gracious on you he he called you he he chosen you we did not choose god but god choose you this evening you came into this meeting not because you have decided it's not because you choose god is god ordained you before the creation of this world that you should hear this word from him so there is no accident in a child of god's life everything is orchestrated by god in your life see so here it's very clearly you need to understand that god graciously graced on you that's how you are saved once he, he graced on you and then when the grace of god comes on you you become saved that is a thing which he has done for all every for all time but it's from our end that we need to receive that grace it's from your end that you need to tap it up you need to take it up or reject it up <clears throat> like for example if i am in a jail and i have to pay 1 million dollars and i cannot pay 1 million dollars because it's a very huge amount but someone came and said that i'm going to pay 1 million dollars for you to be free now what i have to do is i have to accept it i have to accept this uh, the grace or the mercy which he have given to me hallelujah so when i accept it i am free or i can i can adore him and just um thank him always for what he has done but if i say that no i refuse i would love to be in the jail for all my years so decision is ours and that is done that is a faith by which you tap the grace you receive the grace that's why when you read romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 can anyone read romans 5 1 and 2 beautiful verse it says therefore, something like this therefore huh? having been justified by faith we okay. have peace with god through huh? our lord jesus christ through hmm. whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which Kando. we stand did you understand that verse second verse again through whom also we have access by faith into his into this grace in Kando. which we stand okay. so uh, the faith uh, we have an access by faith access by faith of what of grace which was given to us so grace needs to be tapped in in our life 24 by 7 only by faith if you don't have faith you cannot tap in the grace which god gives to us so faith is very important uh, uh, to to receive it hallelujah the grace when god is giving to us see so <clears throat> it's not that grace god gives you grace yes god gives you grace to everyone who ask or god sorry god gives grace to everyone all the people in this earth god have gracious unto them so that they so the program of grace was given to all but only the people who have faith they can access onto that grace bible very clearly says that can you read that the second verse says by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of god see so the god lavish 
his grace to everyone on, on everyone yeah, hindus muslims uh, sikhs christians everyone god has graces grace on god, uh, god has given the grace to that's why i will very clearly says in titus 2 11 what it says titus chapter 2 verse 11 if you have bible can you read fast titus chapter 2 verse 11 yeah for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. See, so the grace of God which brings salvation appears to Christians. No, it's not for Christians. It's not for any sect of people. To all men, it was given to all men. The grace was given to all men. How the grace was given? Through the Calvary cross where Jesus bled where Jesus uh, took the punishment. So to all the men, Jesus has given the grace. But those who have faith in Jesus can only tap in and get advantage of it. You know, that is something which is so beautiful, which the Lord wants every one of us to have faith. Otherwise, the grace goes in vain. We all have to understand that thing. Hallelujah, very clearly. So ask, ask Lord that, Lord, I want the faith so that the grace which you supplied on me, Lord, I should take a good judgment in my free will where I can tap it and I leave my life. That's what the Bible says that um, the righteous will live in faith. Bible says that. Who is righteous? The righteous is who understand the value of grace of God. The righteous is one who understand that I am, what I am today is because of the grace of God. That's what yesterday we read that. So Paul is saying that what I am today, I am because of the grace of Almighty God. So today, if a righteous man always uh, acknowledges that, understand that, that his life is zero or his righteousness are filthy rags and is all had a day-to-day -day life, is because of the grace of Almighty God. If you understand that, that your life is because of the grace of God, hallelujah, you will be righteous. That's what the Bible says that. If you are a righteous man, you will have a faith, hallelujah, to tap in. You will have a faith to receive in, in your life. Hallelujah. First Timothy 2, 4. There is a word who says that. Who wants all the people to be saved is written like this. That means grace is not limited to what? To some people. The grace was given to all. Right? First Timothy 2, 4, what it says? Yeah. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. No. So he desires everyone to be saved. Hallelujah. Everyone to be saved. No one should go to the hell. Hallelujah. Hell is not for you. Yesterday I said, hell is not for you. God has already given you the grace. And how you got the grace? Through Jesus Christ. Yesterday we saw about it. So that you apply your faith on Jesus. And hallelujah, experience the kingdom life. And hallelujah, go to the place where Lord... Uh, wants every one of us to go. So even after uh, giving a rich grace, you can have always a reason to refuse it or deny it or to take it. And that taking is depend upon your faith. Hallelujah. So if you don't have a faith, God gives grace. Richly God gives grace. But if you don't have faith, you cannot uh, get anything out of God. <clears throat> Amen. God could have, Lord could have given, Lord have given so much grace to Judas, but he could not take it in faith. But same way Peter could take it in faith, he was saved. Amen. So always pray that, Lord, give me the faith to receive the grace which you are supplying every 24 hours in my life. 
Hallelujah. If you don't have faith, you cannot do it. See, that is something which the uh, Bible very clearly teaches each and every one of us. It's a grace of God which, e which even opens our hearts. It opens our heart. The grace of God which, which supplies to everyone, the grace of God opens your heart also. It's a grace of God. Today, every one of you are sitting here because God opened your heart. See? And God opens your heart. He grace. He sent grace to everyone in this earth. And he opens some people's heart. But it's up to you to deny it or you to take it. You know, there is a beautiful story in, I really love it, uh, in Acts chapter 16 when you read. There is one girl whose name was L Lydia. Hope you all know about it. Uh, if you read uh, um, Acts chapter 16, verse 14, it says that. Can you read it? Now, Acts 16. Now a, cert now a certain woman named Lydia mm. heard us. Mm. She was mm. a seller of purple from the mm. city of Thyatira who worshipped mm. God. The mm. Lord opened her heart to heed mm. the things spoken by Paul. Did you understand that? Why God, why God opened her heart when she was uh, God's worshipper? Did you see that word there? She was worshipping God. But still, her heart was not open. Right? So a genuine question. You can ask. Hallelujah. So here, she was a worshipper of God. But God opened her heart. Lydia, you know that she was selling the purple uh, uh, cloth and that was very famous at that time that purple color shows the royalty and the Jews always loves or the, the people always loves to have that color as a royal uh, sign. So it was a very big business. That she was from Titeria. Everyone knows about it. And she was a businesswoman, you can say. But she loved God. <laughs> she loves God. She have a thirst of understanding Jehovah. Probably at that time, the Bible was not there, as you people have the Bible. So she had a devotion towards the Jehovah. Yeah. Uh, she, was uh, she was convinced that Jehovah is the true God. <clears throat> but still, she, her heart was not open because she did not understand the true meaning of grace which was defined in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the New Testament, the true meaning of faith, the true meaning of grace has come into picture only after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When the true things was explained by the hallelujah apostles. Hallelujah. So Lydia's heart, Lydia would have been a good devotee who have a um, women's conference at the uh, bank of that river. She was, and Paul just uh, passed on to that river and he started speaking to these ladies. And God opened the heart. That is a grace which God showed on Lydia. Hallelujah. See, Lydia could have stopped there. <laughs> Lydia could have, uh, could have made a Full stop when God opened the door. She have all the reason to say that, no, I, my God is, uh, is Jehovah and I believe in Moses. She could have said that. But when God opened her heart, she understand the revelation. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The true revelation comes into your life when God is graciously opened your heart. Heart. That's why in Ephesians, when you read, he enlightened you. He opened your hearts to know you. That's what the Bible very clearly says about it. Hallelujah. So God opened Lydia's heart and she did not stay there. All Taiti, it was the historian says that because of her, all city received the gospel of true Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. She was used very powerfully. Hallelujah. She did not subside herself. Today we are, we are receiving the word 
God opened your heart and still we are stingy to speak about the God's word to the people. Today still we are in a position where we are zero, busy with our own things and we are not hallelujah faithful to what God has done for you. Hallelujah. We all have to be accountable one day for what God has given to you. Every one of you is accountable for what great thing which God has given to us. So we should always pray that Lord increase my faith so that Lord I can hallelujah speak out, tap the grace and speak out the word which God you have given to me. Hallelujah. John 6 44. It says that no man come to me except the father send me to draw him. That's the word of God says. So God has chosen us. He draws us. We did not draw God with your good works. You did not draw God with your beauty. Hallelujah. God choose you before the creation of this world so that Hallelujah, you will stand on to your faith and declare what God wants from each and every one of your lives. Hallelujah, so grace is not only denying, uh, die, sorry, dying on to the cross, hallelujah, but also he opening our hearts when we believe on to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, so right to deny is our part and that is something, hallelujah, where we need to uh, have the faith. Hallelujah. Faith is receiving, believing. Hallelujah. Believing on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That is something which uh, which is very precious and we all ought to have that. Always ask God about this. Lord, give me a pure faith so that, oh God, I should not be wavers. Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23, Hold fast the faith without wavering. Wavering. I don't want the faith with wavers. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes you are very, you have faith, and sometimes you say, "Are you are you sure God is really God is there?" Some people are saying this. Some sometimes your 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 you, your faith level is so high. Sometimes it says that oh, I doubt that really Jonah went into the uh, fish belly or something like that. You doubt, we doubt a lot of things. See? So, very clearly, Bible says that wavering faith is not what God like. God loves. You know, when they were in the boat, there was a storms, winds, it came. Jesus said that, why you waver your faith? Many times, we, Jesus is in our boat and still we waver. Still we waver. Still we think that how it's going to be happening. Still we waver and say that, is it true? The word of God is true. You are denying the word of God when you waver. Hallelujah. You are disowning Jesus Christ and his power on your life. Hallelujah. You are denying. Many times we say that, uh, do you think that God can really forgive my sins? I am so sinner. I'm, I, I did something so nasty thing. I don't think that now Lord can uh, uh, forgive me. Hallelujah. That means you are denying the power of his blood. You are denying, you're disowing that there is an inferiority in the power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Never do that. Have faith. You should have a pure faith and believing. Hallelujah. That Lord, what he has done, he has done complete for me. Hallelujah. See, there is a this uh, hyper grace people or hyper, uh, you can say Calvinist people. Uh, these people, they say that God has already gracious on us. Uh, we don't have to, <clears throat> we don't have to do anything uh, because God is already gracious, graced on each and every one of us. Uh, so we don't have even the power to deny it because we are saved. So. We, we are saved, uh, but we don't have a power to get out of it. You know, that is what the hyper-Calvinist, they used to say. That we don't have any power to, uh, to say no. So whatever we are doing is okay. We'll definitely go to heaven. This is a moment. It's very dangerous. This is a cult. Hallelujah. A cult moment. 
which were the great hyper grace people they are saying that we already are saved and it's because of the grace ha uh, so we cannot even now we cannot deny it or we cannot go out of it surely we are going to be in heaven so do whatever you want so it's a god's work which was done in us so we don't have to worry about anything surely we are going to be in heaven this is a concept which was emerging in the young people's youths um, many areas it was flowing like anything because it's a very easy license for doing sin so people can uh, people can be very comfortable in that uh, the people are teaching that uh, you are saved and now you are stamped you are sealed for the heaven so you don't have to worry ha uh, whether there was a sin or not it's our outer man who is doing the sin but your inner man is already sealed for the heaven it's a rubbish and it is not at all a true gospel hallelujah the faith is something which you need to receive it or you need to deny it there is a part of salvation in your of your life also grace i told you god has given you the grace has and saved but for faith it's your part we all have all to do it or deny it hallelujah this is something which we needs to learn that's why bible says that work out your salvation working out your salvation in fearful way bible says that it says that bride prepared herself ready so bride is not prepared bride has to prepare herself you have to prepare your life holy spirit will only show you the way it will not force you the way to show the way it will only tell you the way it will only help you he is a helper he is a comforter he shows the way but the way you need to walk that's why the bible says that prepare your own narrow path you have to prepare your narrow way <laughs> hallelujah god will help you yes god will instruct you god has given you his instruction hallelujah but you every one of us have to prepare our own narrow path hallelujah so tapping the grace and move on which which needs a faith in each and every one of your life hallelujah otherwise only faith also cannot work out if the grace of god is not hallelujah on you and now satan says that i have a faith in jesus there are many people who says that i have faith in jesus i believe in jesus hallelujah but that won't work out unless he was supplied by the grace and why god gracious on them that is we don't know <laughs> this is the god sovereign plan but god did it for each and every one of us hallelujah so faith is some something which is very precious and which needs to be tapped in hallelujah by uh, by by us so that is our part of doing it that's why i will say in hebrews chapter 1 verse 11 verse 1 what it says faith is a substance of things now faith is the substance of things hoped mm. for the evidence mm. of things not seen ha ah. see so it is a substance of things we hoped for evidence of this not seen we didn't see it tomorrow is an examination we don't know but we we don't know but we have faith in jesus see that is something which is precious that depend upon person to person hallelujah those who don't have faith they will say no no don't waste time keep on studying keep on studying 24 hours you study 25 hours see so if you have little more faith they will say no 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 at least you study 20 hours if you have more study more faith so the faith as the pure faith you have you have more trust in the lord the most reliability on the lord because you did not see but still you believe on him that is something which is very precious the worldly people cannot understand this the world cannot understand this it cannot be measured in any barometer hallelujah it is measured only by god hallelujah so faith is a substance of things which we hope for 
the evidence of things hallelujah bible very clear of of not see the things which we do not see evidence of the things which we don't see that is faith amen so it's very precious very precious hallelujah bible uh, very clearly speaks about the faith and it is creating in every one of you by hearing it and what you are hearing the word of god how faith creates in us how faith develops in you is by the word of god bible speaks this when you read uh, romans chapter 10 verse 17 i believe it says that consequently the faith comes from hearing it's written like this right can you read that <clears throat> so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god wow so faith which is in us which is tapping the grace of god hallelujah which is moving you towards hallelujah the salvation hallelujah is by it is developed in us by hearing the word of god see salvation has three stages salvation means you are saved being saved and you shall be saved hallelujah this is the three stages hallelujah the first salvation which you receive is by the grace grace of god and i know that grace of god will be there till the last those who have put their faith on him god is gracious if my son is always abiding in me i always protects him i always covers him i always gives him whatever he wants because i know that he trust in me i uh, he i know that he always wants to be abide in me hallelujah but if my son wants to kill me then i uh, i i don't know i mean what is going to be the treatment and relationship between us though i have a grace on him but i cannot stay with him hallelujah when you see david the absalom wants to kill david <laughs> or absalom wants the things Abs david had love absalom so much but they don't stay together because of the rivalry which which the absalom had so grace is something which is supplied to his children more and more when you have a faith to uh, to hug him faith to receive him faith to come and closer to him abide on him i ask lord for that faith lord i don't wants to move um one one minute out of you lord jesus give me the faith so that i can be more closer and closer to you and believe what you are going to do in my life is something beautiful and the best that is something which god wants from each and every one of us ask lord to enhance elevate the faith level in my life of god if you don't have that elevated faith level you will have always fear that's that the same way how the disciples when they were in the boat when they look at the wind and when the storms they started fearing hallelujah they started hallelujah they started perplex themselves they said that we are going to die this is a problem and where jesus was at that time he was not away from the boat he was on the boat and these disciples they literally saw how great miracles happened just one hour before these these uh, disciples saw the dead race the dumb hallelujah the, the blind see the lame walk they saw the supernatural miracles literally in front of them what jesus did but at the time of crisis jesus when he was there in the with them they doubt hallelujah is it the same thing which was happening in our life also jesus is there but we doubt jesus is there with us but still we doubt why because some inferior faith hallelujah when we our faith level increases then i'm very sure no mountains can move you up and jesus said that if you have faith tell this mountains to be plucked out and 
just install in some other way, other place, and the mountain will obey you. That is a faith. Amen. So that can, that is a pure faith which has to be developed in us. Hallelujah. Uh, how that can be developed, we will see. Your know, Bible very clearly says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's what we read. But people did not want to hear this word of God. People don't want to hear it. People want to run away from hearing it. See, before in the meetings and all, I saw 28 people, 29 people. The church goers are getting lesser and lesser today. Hallelujah. In, if you put a convention, there are people are getting less. See, why people are not interested in hearing the word of God. They are interested in hearing something else. So how do you expect a faith be developed in you? <clears throat> Hallelujah. So faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. You know, there is a beautiful verse in Second Timothy. I don't have time much. But 4, 3. When you read it, it says that for the for time, the time come, hmm. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But no. according to their own desires, because no. they have itching ears, they will no. heap up for themselves themselves teachers. This is the problem. <clears throat> this is the problem. Today, the faith is getting uh, diminished in the Christian dawn. Itching ear. Hallelujah. Itching ears. That's the Bible says that. But with itching ears, they will gather around themselves the teachers who soothe their own desires. They love to hear their own gospel. They love to hear what can comfort their flesh. They don't want to hear a gospel which apostles preach that unless and until you suffer, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. This gospel, they don't like it. The gospel where Jesus said that unless and until you pay a price, hallelujah, you are not fit for the kingdom of God. They don't like it. Unless and until you prepare your narrow path and walk according to that, you will never, hallelujah, these people, they do not like it. They have an itching ear. Hallelujah. Jesus said that, hallelujah, un uh, deny yourself and carry the cross. How many of the people likes this gospel? Itching ear, they likes something which can makes them giggle or makes them happy or makes them comfortable. That's why they are not developing the faith in their life. Another gospel. They love another gospel. They love to Enjoy into a gospel which can bring prosperity, physical uh, prosperity in their life. That's why today they have diluted the gospel. Hallelujah. They have made Christ again crucified. Jesus Christ came with only one purpose. That the establishing a body which can believe onto a true gospel, a true doctrine. So that they can, te they can teach others also. But it's, it's a crying situation of Jesus today when he saw the world. The world is going with the comfort gospel. Jesus Christ become poor so that you will become rich. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ did not have Mercedes Benz so you can have Mercedes Benz. What type of gospel is this? It's an itching ear. That's how Bible says that. That's why faith is not found in people. Hallelujah. Bible says in Romans 10, 17, Hallelujah. The faith comes from the hearing and hearing the word of God. And what they are hearing, they are here not hearing the true word of God. They are hearing some sugar-coated word of God. Hearing the God, word of God which can give their desires more pumped up. Hallelujah. This will never, hallelujah, develop a pure faith in their life. Amen. Tune your heart that, Lord, I want 
to hear the word which without any mix with purity of god i want to hear the word of god bible very clearly says that when you read the galatians chapter 1 uh, there you can find uh, one verse 6 i believe can I read one 6 i marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called mm. you in the grace of christ mm. to a different gospel to a different gospel soon you have changed because you have itching here because you want to hear a gospel with your with which can gives your own desire shoot up uh, the seventh verse hmm. which is not another but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of christ hmm. next but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. Did anyone understand that? Any gospel which the apostles are not preached, practiced, where Jesus Christ did not preach or practiced, if you speak anything out of that, you are accursed. It's not me who said, is Bible who te which teaches us. Hallelujah. Very clearly Bible speaks about it. In my Bible, it's written like this. Which uh, I was astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. You are called by the grace. Hallelujah. And you have faith also. You had faith to tap the grace, but you Turn to a different gospel. That's what the Bible says. And the seventh verse, something very beautiful in my Bible, it's written there. Which is really no gospel at all. My Bible says something like this. It's, it is not really a gospel. So all gospel preaching or gospel, what we are hearing, is not all gospels. Unless and until you see that from the light of the word of God, Hallelujah, what Paul spoke, how Holy Spirit revealed it to us, hallelujah, we will also be, uh, could also be turned away. There are millions of people, millions of Christians today, they were diverted from the true gospel. Hallelujah. And every shepherd has to give an accountable for that. Every pastor has to give an account for that. Hallelujah. When they are standing in the queue of the hell, these pastors are going to be, or these servants are going to be, or these leaders are going to be accountable for that. Hallelujah. They will be asked. They will be punished more severely than the people who are in the line. Hallelujah. If tonight, if those who are hearing, hallelujah, this, hallelujah, do not, hallelujah, fix the heart of the people into another gospel. Do not fix the heart of the people to the dirt of this world. Hallelujah. Physical the things of this world. Connect them. Hallelujah. For the eternity. Where is our promised lies? Where, where the Lord have, uh, Lord have paid a price in the Calvary cross to tell you this. Not tell something about the filth of this earth. Hallelujah. We all have to be accountable for that. Hallelujah. If we are diverting from the true gospel. So the faith which develops in us is by hearing the word of God. If you hear the wrong word of God, your faith will be waver. Your faith will be in a different. Today, many people are going Garvapusi. Why? Because these people are given a wrong gospel. They were fixed with the gospel of, if you come to Jesus, you will get money. If you come to Jesus, you will get this. If you come to Jesus, you will have all the problems solved. Wrong gospel. If you come to Jesus, your problem will be more, not less. That is a true gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God will give you the grace. God will help you to overcome it. So coming to Jesus, all your you will get all the blessings. Uh, today you are you are in cycle. When you come to Jesus, you will get a Mercedes Benz. No, no. Wrong gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Maybe when you come to Jesus, even your cycle will go. <laughs> Maybe that will also happen. See, so you are not coming into the faith because to get a Mercedes Benz. You are coming into the into the into into the Lord where you received what you you are not deserved. Hallelujah. You deserved punishment, man. You deserved hell. Your place was hell, but the grace of God which brings you into his family. That is a privilege which God has given to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. So even though when I am speaking this, someone's heart was saying, oh, it's very tough. Yeah, if come to Jesus, I will lose oh, you. I, how I can? God will give you the grace. God will give. How many apostles died like a billionaire? There is no apostle who uh, who who died in a, in a uh, in a palace. So if that is a mark of a blessing, then all these apostles should be the billionaires. Paul did not get even a piece of cloth. Which he says, Sir, please bring at least that piece of cloth so that I can see and die. See, that is a gospel. Hallelujah. So gospel brings the life of Jesus in us. It did not bring the material benefit in us. It brings the life of Jesus. And when you have a life of Jesus, even though you have one cloth, you will be happy. Even you don't have money also, you will be rich. Even you don't have anything to be comforted, you will be so joyful. That is a richness which the God said that if you come to me, I'll give you that rich. You don't need money to be enjoyed. You don't need uh, 15 sets of clothes in your almara to be, uh, to be joyful. You don't need any people. I am going to be your portion, God says. If I am your portion, you don't lack anything. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Bible says, if Lord is your shepherd, he will provide everything richly to you. What is richly? Richly did not mean you become a millionaire. Richly means the grace. The grace which he supplies. Even though if you are hungry for three days, if grace of God, you will be like eating chicken biryani every one hour. You feel like this. That is a grace. When you have grace, you will never scarce anything. You will be so joyful. And that is the grace of God. You know? So the prosperity is something which God supplies. Not man supplies. Hallelujah. The prosperity of Old Testament is, uh, is something which gets from this world. Hallelujah. That's why, hallelujah, the, the people are uh, uh, running behind the prosperity the, uh, prosperity preaching. I am also going for a prosperity preaching. I believe in prosperity be preaching. But my prosperity definition is not something which you supply from the world, but from the above, from the heaven. God make you prosper by his presence. God makes you prosper by his grace. That is prosperity. And if you have, when you have that providing you, you will sing songs as Paul and Silas, they sang into the, in the, uh, in the jail. See, they sang songs. Why? Because they were prosper. The world says, how you are prosper? You are already on the chain. How, how you can say that you are a prosper? You are already in the chain. They said, no, 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 not this prosperity. I got a prosperity from my heaven. That's why I sing songs. How Paul could able to write all these 14 books or chapters? See, Paul was in the jail. See, if we don't have an AC in our room, we feel so uncomfortable. People, uh, people might not study. Oh, I cannot study in this room. I am uncomfortable. Right? We all say that, right? See? But Paul did not have AC fan. Paul was in a place where it was stinky. 
Paul was in a place where the dead rats were there and smelling is a dungeon. It has all sort of worst situation you ever can write it on a dictionary. But still he was prosper. He was so prosper. Think about it. His hand was chained. His leg was chained. And stinky things are, smell is coming. Just visualize that situation. How Paul was. But he wrote, hallelujah, 14 books. You know why? Because he was prosper by God's presence. Hallelujah. Ask God to have hallelujah, that prosperity in my life. Hallelujah. Scarcity did not mean you are cursed. Scarcity did not mean that you, you are not eligible for something. Hallelujah. Scarcity. World may say that you don't have money. World may say that you have you are zero. But when you have the grace of Almighty God, you are going to be very joyful in that situation. Bible very clearly says about it. You know, that is something which God gives into us. And that is faith through which you turn it. You turn the situations of your life. Hallelujah. Into a prosperous situation. Hallelujah. When we read about Gideon's story, Hallelujah. God asked 32,000 people came with Gideon. 32,000. <coughs> there were more than uh, 400,000 people who were who are standing against them. And how many people came? Only 32,000. And God said that, uh, that is so, so big. So uh, if I would have been in the Gideon's place, I would have said, God, what are you saying? I thought you are going to add some more people from somewhere. And you are saying that, 32,000 is so big. Hallelujah. And then what God did? God reduced it. Hallelujah. How much was there? How much people were there? 10,000 people left. 22,000 people left. Or some people. I don't know. After 10,000, God said, no, 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 no. I think this is also too much. <laughs> so Gideon did not ask a single question. He have a faith in God. He said, yes, Lord, I know that because you have, you have trained me. I asked some signs and you showed me my faith increases. You, whatever you say, if you ask me to go individually, I go with, go and fight. So if we would have been there, how you will respond to God? And God said that 10,000 is too much, son. So God said that, okay, reduce it. And he reduced to 300. <laughs> 300 people for 400,000 people. Think about the logics. So one person has to kill how many people, you know? Go and calculate it. Around 1,000 people plus people have to, one person has to kill. It. You people are good in mathematics. So you can just go ratio. 300 people and here 400,000 people. So one person has to kill more than 1,500 or 1,400 people. Hallelujah. He has a faith in God. You know, 300 is 300. Now, Gideon thought that God will give AK-47 or so that he can easily uh, shoot. So he might, in my, my imagination, he would have asked God, the Lord, now what is the weapon which I'm going to hold on? God said, no weapon. No weapon. He said, what? First of all, 32,000. Now 10,000. Now 300. No, no weapon. <laughs> we are going for a for a party or we are going for a fight. So God says that my ways are like this. If you have faith, you will see the glory of God. <clears throat> Your plan is not my plan. Your ways are not my ways. My ways is very unique. You know, there was a blind man who, uh, who was there and everyone came and said that, Lord, 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 come, come, this blind man. Uh, heal him, heal him. Place your hand and heal him. Jesus spit at ground. <laughs> so everyone said that this is not the way to heal, man. He said, my ways are different. It's not your ways. You think that I should come and lay my hand on it and say in the name of uh, just heal and go. No, no, no. My ways are different. So he took the, he spit it, take the clip, mud out of it, mix with the spit and put it on his eyes. So everyone thought, okay, at least now he is going to be healed. He said, no, no, not now. 
go to pool silo wash your face and come out he said what is this what nonsense disgracing god says sometimes it's disgracing but my ways are my ways it's not your ways so i, I always imagine this, this guy was standing in in the top of the steps and someone say nonsense what are you doing <laughs> go back home go and beg you will get some money he said no what he said let me try it he go every step he goes down people might might have discouraged him but he went and washed his face in the shilo and he received his sight back i mean so god's ways are very unique very different you should have faith in him so 300 people three weapons god have given to him what is there sword in it no is a javelin in it no is there is a shield in it no god gave three weapons one is the earthen pot <laughs> fighting for 300000 people earthen pot second what you know what the trumpet blow your trumpet and the third what god gave the lamp or the flame the torch three weapons god gave it's nonsense in the eyes of god but if you have faith in god god can make things impossible things into possible out of that when you believe in god god can do greater things in your life if you apply your faith on him god's ways are not your ways your ways hallelujah his ways are much greater and wonderful than your ways trust in god god have something beautiful things into your life ask god that lord hallelujah in my inferiority in my shortcomings lord i many times i doubted you lord increase my faith this evening help me oh god that my faith will be growing more and more in my life can you just pray about it i'm very sure god is going to do that in your life increase your faith by faith moses refused refused to be the pharaoh's hallelujah pharaoh's son he would have received all this but by faith he refused to enjoy the pleasure of this egypt that is something which god wants from us he did not see what god he did not saw what god have already prepared for him god did not show him a vision hallelujah that you become the messiah or you become the uh, deliverer of full egypt uh, or israelites he did not show but he have faith he have faith hallelujah moses have faith in god hallelujah that's why god lifted him up those who have faith in him hallelujah and blindly believe on to him trusting that god will do it for me god will do extraordinary thing for you amen world says first you do it then i believe but god says no first you believe then i will do it amen that is not the pattern of the world how god is god's pattern so let's let's submit ourselves before god that and say that lord increase my faith this evening let's pray that lord we thank you and praise you for this beautiful time you have blessed us oh god this evening of oh god we heard that grace which you have supplied to us lord let that grace be tapped by my faith receive by my faith lord many times i did not receive the grace hallelujah which you send on me oh god and i miss it because i have inferior faith holy spirit of god this evening i pray that you elevate our faith level of god jesus there are many areas of oh god where we could not able to prepare our heart properly to receive the faith we are hooked into the world so that our faith level is inferior oh god jesus many time i pray that lord you release the people out of the dirt and prepare their heart properly oh god so that they can they can have the faith pure faith so that lord they will move on their life with victory to victory oh god jesus help them oh god strengthen them on all. all the areas of their life where they they do not have a trust on you oh god let this area be taken out from them and the holy spirit of god who was on that areas of their life 
help them and strengthen them, O oh God. We give all glory, honor, and praises. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray and ask. Amen, amen, amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be with each and every one of us until the coming of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining with us this evening also with the word enrichment. We thank you for your joining and I'm very sure that God will surely enhance your faith level when you trust on him, rely on him, when you prepare your heart rightly for him. God's rich word will come on to you. When you discern what is the true gospel and the wrong gospel and when you embrace onto the true gospel, Lord will enhance your faith level and that will give you a boost to move forward uh, in every day of your Christian life. That's why look on to the author and finisher of your faith, Bible says. Look on to Jesus and move your life. Surely God is going to bless you. Have a wonderful time and God bless you all.